On Sunday, we're going to observe Tisha B'Av. The ninth day of Av is the day that commemorates the destruction of our temples. And the Talmud discusses that the Babylonians, they entered into Jerusalem, they came and defiled the Holy Temple. And on the ninth day of Av, Tisha B'Av, they set the temple in flames. And the temple burned throughout the evening of the ninth of Av and the entire tenth day of Av. And so the question that the Talmud asks is, if the temple primarily burnt down on the tenth day of Av, why do we mourn the destruction of the temple on the ninth day of Av? The Talmud answers by saying that the ninth day of Av was Eschalta de Piraniusa, which means the beginning of the tragedy of the calamity. And therefore we don't mark the destruction of the temple on the day that the temple primarily burnt down, but on the day that the calamity, the tragedy, the misfortune began, which is the ninth day of Av. Rabbi Aaron Salvechik explains what this means. He says, the Talmud says that when the enemies, the Babylonians set the temple in flames, the Pirchei Kohuna, which means the young Kohanim, went onto the roof of the temple, onto the Heichal, and they said to God, God, if you feel that we are not worthy to be Gizbarim Ne'amonim, faithful custodians, guardians of your temple, then here are the keys to the temple. We're returning the keys. And they threw the keys of the temple into the ear to return them symbolically to God. And therefore, says Rabban Salavechik, at that moment when the young Kohanim lost all hope, when they despaired, when they lost faith, and they threw the keys into the air, returning them to God, that was the moment of the ultimate tragedy. And therefore, that's the day that we mourn the destruction of the temple. Because when we give up hope, that's when it's all over. That's when the tragedy occurs. As long as we have hope, there's the possibility of a brighter future. And perhaps this applies as well to our interpersonal relationships. Our rabbis tell us that why was the temple destroyed? Because of sinat chinam, baseless hatred amongst Jews. And the question is, what does it mean baseless hatred? No one gets up in the morning and just looks at someone and says, ah, I'm going to hate you. Why? Why not? There's always a reason for hatred. What does it mean baseless hatred? And perhaps it means as follows. There are some times that someone does something that's questionable. You don't have a basis. You don't have proof why, what their motivation was. You could either judge them favorably and give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they had good intentions, or you could give them a negative judgment. Now with ourselves, we always give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. But when it comes to others, sometimes we think negatively of others. And that's the meaning of baseless hatred. Why judge them in a negative light if you could judge them in a positive light? If you have no basis to, to know for sure what their intention was, why think negatively? There are so often situations where someone didn't invite you or someone didn't say good morning to you and you could either think, oh, they don't like me, then being mean to me, they're unkind. Or you could say, you know what, they may have forgotten, they overlooked it. Always, when you don't have a basis, you go in the positive direction, think good and judge people favorably. And that's something practical that we could do over the next nine days and beyond. Always try to give people like we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. And I learned this lesson last week. When we came back from Israel, we spent the day touring Portugal. And at the end of the day, we headed back to the airport to catch our flight back to America, to the States. And we had a bunch of handbags and we were going to the flight. We were about an hour away from the flight. And I put all the bags on a cart and we started going to, into the airport from the parking lot. When we came in, I needed to withdraw some cash from the machine. So I went over to the ATM machine and I left Yehuda Tzvi to watch the cart. And I come back, I grab the cart and started heading towards the gate. And I quickly look over the bags to see if all the five bags were there when I notice that my tefillin bag is no longer on the cart. And not only was it my tefillin bag, which is my most prized possession, two pairs of tefillin that I have, in addition to that, all three passports were in the side pocket of the tefillin, as well as my cell phone. And I said, oh my, what's gonna be? What happened to my bag? I said, well, maybe it fell off on the way from the parking lot. So I ran back and I retraced my steps and looked for the bag and could not find the bag. At this point, I was convinced 
that when I went to the ATM machine, maybe Yehuda Tzvi turned around and wasn't watching and someone snatched a beautiful big brown leather bag and stole it. And I said, what's going to be? I'm going to be stuck here in Portugal now. I lost my tefillin. And not only that, I'm going to have to make new passports and get a new phone, all my contacts. And who knows how long this is going to take. And at that point, Dini approached the police office and said, our bag is missing. Presumably, maybe someone stole it. If there's cameras, someone could find it. And so the police officer said, let me see if I can help. And in Portuguese, this police officer went on his radio and said to all the security personnel in the airport, does anyone see a brown bag, a leather bag? Within a minute, a woman police officer starts walking towards us, holding my tefillin bag. I can't tell you the joy I had seeing her coming with the bag. And we said, where did you find it? She said, well, some passenger was going through the airport and saw it on the floor and came to a police officer to return it to me saying, someone lost the bag. Maybe you could find the right owner." And every day when I put on my film, I'm gonna to try to remember that lesson. Don't think negatively about people. Don't assume the worst. Just like we can't lose faith in God and our hope in God and in ourselves and our future, so too we should never lose faith in others. Always believe in other people. Always trust in the inner goodness of other people. When we learn to have faith in God and faith in our fellow men, then we will merit the redemption. Have a wonderful day.